ladies and sinners, welcome to another Tuesday evening edition of the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your host, Kale Henderson. You guys can get at us on our Twitter forums, at Sin City, underscore IESR, at Kale underscore Henderson, where we talk all things Vegas sports. This is IE Vegas. And IE Vegas, or the Sin City Sports Show, which is presented by IE Sports Radio, is brought to you by... Planet Jerky. Planet Jerky Premium Beef Brisket Jerky. Planet Jerky is the official jerky of the 2022 California League champion, Lake Elsinore Storm Single A affiliate of the San Diego Padres. This all brisket jerky has gluten-free options, contains no MSG, no sodium nitrate, low in sugar, and high in protein. Planet Jerky, the jerky that's on a whole other planet. You guys can reach out or check them out on Instagram at Planet Jerky. More to be said, if you folks have some wedding plans, if you have some big parties, invitations you want to set out, no big deal. Seal the deal, Wax Seals by Cecilia B. You just finished your very own wedding or baby shower invitations and you're looking to make an extra special touch. Maybe you just wrote a letter to a relative or friend and you want to add to their smile when they receive it. Seal the deal with Cecilia's handmade sealing wax stamps for your invitations letters and gifts you bring the deal we'll bring the seal instagram at seal the deal underscore wax stamps facebook seal the deal wax seals you guys know how it is so it's post super bowl here on ie sports radio so i have to do a quick recap because it is an afc west foe um and i do that and i say that because i'm envious man you know um We're going to talk about the Raiders later, what I believe they need to do. But the reality is the Chiefs won the Super Bowl the other day. Yes, they got help from the referees. Yes, it's plastered all over social media. Absolutely. Every single play, every single play on that final drive, the Kansas City Chiefs had a blatant hold. I understand that. It wasn't called. And that's just the name of the game. So we got to stop bitching about it, man. Okay? We got to stop bitching about it. The Chiefs are on a whole other level right now. Do you guys remember when the Kansas City Chiefs traded away Tyreek Hill and they got absolutely flogged? Like, destroyed for it. Why? They had the most important piece. The most important piece that you can have on your franchise team, which is Patrick Mahomes. Who at this point, it doesn't matter if his linemen hold for him every single play. It doesn't matter if... if Patrick Mahomes has more personal fouls and roughing the passer penalties by like 30 penalties than the second most in the league, quarterback in the league, Joe Burrow, who didn't play since week 10. None of that matters. What matters is the Chiefs said, we got our piece. We've got Patrick Mahomes. If we trade Tyreek Hill when he's at his all-time high in value, we're going to get a ton of picks. And you know what they did with those picks? They got Trent McDuffie, who's probably one of the best corners in the league already. Like, the dude was locking dudes down, was locking the Niners down, right? He was absolutely locking the Niners down. He was fantastic, man, out of Washington. He's playing so well. Like, Debo Samuel couldn't create any separations with that guy. And, yeah, Debo is always banged up. I get it. But the reality is the Chiefs are just good, man. They're From top to bottom, they're very good. I don't care that they cheat. Everybody cheats a little, okay? And, yes... They do get favored by the NFL because Patrick Mahomes is the poster boy. I totally get it. Reality? The front office has done an amazing job. Yes, Larry, I totally agree. Front office has done a fantastic job, man. You know, they've done a great job of building a winner, and and Andy Reid is is definitely one of the greatest coaches of all time. uh, He's at three now, so he's tied with Bill Walsh, right? Um let me know if there's anybody else he's tied with, guys. I'm very sorry. He's tied with Bill Walsh. I think Chuck Knoll has four. I could be wrong. Bill Belichick has six. Technically, Bill Belichick has eight because he had two as a coordinator. And I, I'm sorry, Bill Belichick is untouchable until somebody gets to, gets past six Super Bowls as a head coach. But Andy Reid is 100%, in my opinion, a top three head coach. 
And the order is Bill at, at the top, and nobody can argue that. I don't care what anybody says. Nobody can argue that. Because even in his heyday, Andy Reid couldn't beat Bill Belichick. So it is what it is. Second could be Bill Walsh. Second could be Andy Reid. I, I think those two guys are kind of neck and neck, and then you have Chuck Knoll up there, right? And I, I'm not saying this is anything bad. Like, you know, Tom Flores deserves his flowers. John Madden deserves his flowers for the impact he left on the game. But Andy Reid is unbelievable. So the Chiefs did nothing but, but amazing things the last few years. They've proven they can win without that speed threat on the outside. They've proven that they can develop Patrick Mahomes and make him a much more um, elite quarterback. And I'm going to say this, man. I want to hate the dude. I really do. I want to hate the dude because he's a chief. And I can't stand those, those um, I don't know how you want to say it. I can't stand, opinions are my opinions alone, those, those fans where their wives look just like their sisters. I, I can't stand them. But the reality is the Chiefs are on another level right now. The reality is Patrick Mahomes is an amazing human being. I, I mean, I kind of feel for the guy. I don't care that he makes $500 million. His wife is crazy. His brother's crazy. His dad's in a lot of trouble. He's got he's got he's got addiction issues. This dude has every reason to be an a-hole, and he's just a great human being. He's wonderful. He takes the joke of his of his voice. He don't care. He's he's uh he's making his Kermit voice on the way to the on, on the way to the bank when he's depositing 500 mil. And that's why I'm envious. That's why I say this, man. The Raiders need to find themselves a quarterback. And we'll get into more detail, but it's obvious that unless you have a quarterback, you are not winning in this league. Period. The Trent Dilfer days of, of riding a, a an elite defense are pretty much done, especially with the way the rules are in favor of the offense. Like, teams have to go after their quarterback if they can go after their quarterback. It's that simple. And then the the, the second here's here's like one of the biggest points I'm going to say about this whole Super Bowl. Um, one, it was an amazing Super Bowl. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, I it was a great game, man. It was a great football game. Um, the Niners choked. I don't care about the overtime rule shit. I don't care not about none of that. The, the, the Niners choked. Okay. I don't know what Kyle Shanahan was doing midway through the game. Like they were, they were gashing the Chiefs. They were controlling everything. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm just being real, man. I. The Niners threw that game. The pet, the untimely penalties, which is really crazy that they would call a holding penalty on a tight end. Um, a backup tight end for the San Francisco 49ers, but not blatant holds the entire final drive. I can totally see why people think there's conspiracy theories. But Kyle Shanahan was outcoached. Um, in the second half, the Chiefs had un unbelievable adjustments. They came out, they were firing, they made moves when it mattered, and in that final drive of the game, man, Patrick Mahomes did Patrick Mahomes. It, it's the reality. So, what what did we learn? Chiefs are on a whole other level, dude, and they deserve their they deserve their flowers right now. I hate them, but they deserve their flowers. They deserve the respect because they're the best team in the league right now. They went back to back. They they've gone three of five. What can you say? They're an incredible team, and they're well run in front office. Got a great coach. It is what it is, man. Uh, Taryn Chop pop, pops in the chat. Good evening, Kale. Have an awesome show as always. Taryn being the greatest teammate. Jen B, how you doing? Um, we'll have a great show. Larry B, you're the man, the myth, the legend. Post Super Bowl, on to the next season. Yeah, already. Well, we're Raiders fans, so we're on to the next season, usually halfway through the year. Um, not bitter, though. Taryn Rodriguez, so the Vegas Thrill, Pro Volleyball Federation's pro women's volleyball team, beat the Omaha Supernovas 3-2 to two on Wednesday at the Shy Health Center. In Omaha, Nebraska. However, the thrill fell to the Orlando Valkyries, three to one on Saturday in Orlando. Uh, Larry B said, "Agreed." I'm guessing you're saying agreed to stop bitching. The Chiefs won the game. I mean, they just they did what they had to do to win. It is what it is. Um, Ralph, what's up, brother? Thank you so much for sh for uh, chiming in. Um, Kale, have a great show. The front office is smart, 100%. Interesting thing is the AFC is improving, but the Chiefs still find ways to win with Mahomes, 100%. Man, like. They had to go through the, the, the playoffs this year on the road, and they still did what they had to do against the Niners team with with respect to the Chiefs. 
were a better team on paper. Like, I don't know, man. It's just crazy. Uh, and the Chiefs have an amazing coach. Eagles have – Eagles fans have to be beside themselves. Yeah. Sometimes a fresh start is a fresh start, man. You know, realistically, the Eagles should have won last year. They just – they kind of did the same thing the Niners did. Right? They just kind of crapped down their leg when it mattered most. But they had the upper hand for a long – for a good period of time in that Super Bowl last year. Just like the Niners had an upper hand. They controlled most of the game. Like the Niners did what, what – mo- they won in field position – they wanted penalties, right? Um, no, sorry, not penalties. Obviously not. <laughs> we saw how that works, man. Uh, social media is blown up with, with missed penalties. But um, they won in field position. They won the turnover margin. Okay. So time of possession. Sorry, not the turnover margin. So they won two out of the three major phases of football. They won time of possession. They won field position. They didn't win the turnover margin. That was not a muff punt, obviously. Uh, people are calling it a muff punt. It was not a muff punt. It hit the ankle of number 28, even though the returner was saying, get away, get away, which is, that's just kind of, that sucks, man. It is what it is. Um, but that's reality. That That's part of the game. Um, the Niners had it in the bag, man. All they had to do was not fundamentally go, I think the moment was just too big, man. Everybody was just super excited. So the Niners lost that game. The Chiefs definitely won the game. It was a great Super Bowl. I think everybody won, in all honesty. The Raiders didn't because the Chiefs won in Raiders Stadium. We'll never live that down. Thanks, Mark Davis. You bowl cut piece of – never mind. It is what it is. Uh, just got to say this shout-out to the Henderson Silver Knights because that's Vegas's neighbor city, and it's Kale's last name. Oh, I love to hear that, baby. Henderson, Nevada. Yeah, I think that's where Raiders headquarters is which is like 20 minutes away from Las Vegas. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. We're going to go to a quick break. When we get back, we're going to dive right into the Golden Knights. And then we're going to talk about what the Raiders need to do to pull their heads firmly out of their, well, you guys get it. When we get back here on the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. <laughs> Hello, sports fans. It's me, your boy, Larry B., and I want to walk you through the world of sports. No, no, no. Not just the mainstream major TV deal type sports, although those are important too. But let me be your guide to your journey of all sports, from college to the pros, the minors, and everything in between. Each week, we are talking sports galore with true diehards just like you from a hardcore fan's perspective that's sure to quench your thirst around leagues you may know all too well and some you may even discover here. That's right, sports fans. If you love sports of all kinds, enjoy hearing amazing sports stories and respect all sports because you know how difficult any of them can be to play or compete in, then this is your show. Join me, your boy Larry B, on the defining moment each week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports, and let the sports come to you. What's happening, sports fans? Are you a fan of Southern California sports? Are you looking for a show hotter than a hot summer day in California? Then look no further than the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, where I talk about all things Southern California sports. That's right, all sports teams from Southern California. From the hard-hitting tackles of the NFL, to the killer crossovers and big three-pointers of the NBA and WNBA, to the grand slams of the MLB, to the bone-chilling goals of the NHL, and to the booming kicks of the MLS, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show has it all for you. Oh, and let us not forget about the college sports as well. So join me, Taryn Rodriguez, every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports.
hockey fans, I'm Adam Kernick. And I'm Zach Puplis. Together, we are the newest version of Hockey Talk on IE Sports Radio, The Neutral Zone. Zone, 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 zone. We love hockey, but we also know it's not everyone's first sport. So we want to make this show as much for new fans as for the diehards. Whether you can name all the Swedes on the 08 Red Wings Stanley Cup team, or if you can't tell if Varlamov is a goalie or the latest trendy vodka, we're here to help. With facts, figures, and outrageous fans, we bring you all the hard-hitting hockey news you can handle, while still keeping it fun and on the rails. Well, mostly. So tune in every week as we go around the hockey world from college to Canada, the minors and the majors, and everywhere in between. So bring your sellies. And your one-timers. Your wicked ristas. And be sure to protect your five-hole. Catch the Neutral Zone every week on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We promise not to pick on the Arizona Coyotes every episode. Ladies and sinners, welcome back to another edition of the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Speaking of IE Sports Radio, for the last nine years, IE Sports Radio has brought you amazing content, ranging from interviewing legendary athletes, coaches, and other authorized media personnel, to building tailor-made shows dedicated to all major sports cities around the country. Make sure to follow us at IE Sports Radio on Twitter. Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok to keep up with the latest in sports with our shows. Also, check out our late, our daily updated website, iesportsradio.com, for sports news, the IE Sports Radio blog, our Hall of Fame, Fans of the Month, pages dedicated to each podcast, our IE Sports Radio community forum, and stop by and check out the merch. Thank you all for making IE Sports Radio your direct feed for all that is sports. You guys can catch us on Twitter, socials, by the way, uh, here at the Sin City Sports Show, at Sin City underscore IESR, at Kale underscore Henderson, where we talk all things Vegas. This is IE Vegas. This is what we do. If you guys miss the show, don't worry about it. We're on, like, everything, man. Um, we're on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Deezer, Spreaker, um, Apple Pods, Google Pods. I mean, we're all over the place. Uh, we're on YouTube, we're on iesportsradio.com. If you guys get a chance, go there, like, follow, follow any of our socials, by the way, because um, it helps the show. Not to mention, look into some of my teammates, man. Guys like Ralph, who run the Z- Yinza Report, right? You got Jen B. Jen B is from the, sh- uh, the Cleveland show. She does an amazing job talking about Cleveland. Bunch of passion, right? Taron Rodriguez, as always, man. Taron Rodriguez is the greatest teammate known, um, known to man. Uh, his main shows are the SoCal Supreme Sports Show. He also is the host of Set Point. The man's busy. He helps Larry B, or he's a co-host for Larry B on Three and Out on the Three and Out edition. I mean, he just he just kills it. Um, so yeah, if you guys get a chance, make sure you guys are listening to them. Um, give them a like, give them a follow, listen to the shows. They do a great job, and they're great teammates. They're always popping in the chat to say hi. Larry says, Kale Henderson, the Silver Knights. Yeah, baby, the Silver Knights are a uh, Golden Knights affiliate. Minor league. Thank you for pointing that out, man. That's awesome. I'm looking to see if there's any names on here that I can recognize. And I'm not really seeing anybody. That's awesome, though. You, you got to love those affiliates, man. I was kind of hoping it was like... 
the USHL, like this is a developmental league. It's not. It's more of a minor league, but it's pretty badass. It looks like they're currently, if we look at statistics, we look at standings, I don't believe the Silver Knights are probably winning anything this year. It looks as though they're kind of developing. Um, I know they're one of the newer teams in the ECHL. Uh, they've played eight, 48 games. They're 24, 21, and 20. Sorry, apologies. Yeah, 21, 21, and 2. That's actually not bad at all. That's not bad at all. They're, so they're a 500 team, just better than 500 team by hockey metric standards uh, points-wise. It looks like their division is crazy good. Like a bunch of teams in the 50s. Uh, the rest of the league, that's not the case. Um, the Atlantic Division with the Hershey's Bears, they're crazy good. Um, 76 points, man. What? Leading the league, man. They're doing like some Bruins type stuff. <laughs> they're doing the Bruins type stuff, man. That's crazy. That's awesome, Larry. Thank you for pointing that out. And that also leads me to the Golden Knights. Not the affiliate, but the actual pro team. They're second in the Pacific Division is still... Um, they're behind by about eight points, so four games back. And here's why, guys. Like, here's the thing. The Golden Knights at one point, so let's let's go back to when they played the Predators. They won three straight against the Predators, Rangers, Penguins. All three teams are pretty decent, right? Lost to the Devils. That's a decent team. It was 6-5. Uh, they win two straight against the Islanders, Rangers. Again, decent teams. Uh, beating them is, is big. Lose to the Red Wings. 5-2. Beat the Oilers, which are a surging team. They're a team that I believe is winning right now as we speak tonight. Uh, they're third place in our division. I don't know how. I don't know how in the, in the hell that they've only played 48 games while the rest of the leaders in the division have played 53. That is so weird. The NHL schedule can be so weird. I know they're going to make that up, but like if Edmonton's getting hot at the right time, dude, all, they could win all five of those games and and be a second place team immediately like that's all it would take and, and right now it looks like mcdavid dry um it looks like Dave, mcdavid and dry are doing their, their regular thing in edmonton and they're, they're starting to go on a run um i've been predicting for a few weeks that i think the golden knights are going to go on a run but it is what it is um they're just they, they tend to slip so like the other so yesterday they lost to the wild 5-3 but you beat the oilers 3-1, it just it doesn't make – it looks like there's some inconsistencies there. Aiden Hill is still killing it. Um, he's still saving 93% of the shots. He's absolutely killing it. There's a good possibility of a run for the rest of the schedule. So here's what I'm talking about. This happens every year. When I look back at the last four seasons, in the second half of the year, the Golden Knights will legitimately go on 10 and 12 game win streaks. They've done it – they, they've had a 10-game win streak in the second half of the year – Four years straight. That's why I believe there's a really good chance this happens again. Carolina, they're decent. Pretty good team. I get it. I think that this matches up well for, for the Golden Knights. It's at home. Um, at San Jose, they're horrible. Right? Nashville's not that great. They're decent. Toronto, obviously, you never know what's going to happen there. But, again, it's still at home, so that gives them an opportunity. Ottawa's pretty damn good team. Toronto, again. Boston, so, I mean, you got some pretty rough teams to play, but those next, I don't know, seven games are very winnable. Buffalo's winnable. Columbus is winnable, right? So, like, when you look at those nine games, if, if the Golden Knights go on a run, dude, they're going to take over first place, even with this, as much as as much as much the Canoover, uh, Vancouver Canucks are as good this year, and they're great, they're amazing, Um they're still, they don't have the experience. I'll put it like this. I would say that the Vancouver Canucks right now are the equivalent to the Niners. They got a ton of players. They're excellent. They're just not experienced, man. They haven't been there before. And that matters. I think the Golden Knights have been there before. Obviously, they're the defending champs. Um, other than last year, not last year, the year before, they were in the playoffs every year. Okay? So, and, and the only reason why they weren't in the playoffs, not, not last year, but the year before, is because half of their team was injured. They were calling up affiliates left and right. That's just the reality of hockey. It's it's a physical sport. It's it's a man sport for sure, dude. Like no joke. But this team is really good. They're they're very potent. Um, I think Jack Eichel's injury 
it's nagging, but it's concerning. It, it matters. I think we, that should be talked about. Uh, let's take a look here. I know that Logan Thompson's one of the backup goalies. He's day to day. Uh, Paul Cotter is one of the one of the backup or one of the I think he's like the fourth line center. He's day to day. Um, yeah, other than that, like there's not really any major injuries. It's just some nagging stuff that Jack Eichel's dealing with, which is huge because I for a while he was leading the team in scoring and points and stuff like that. Now Mark Stone has really come up, come on the the captain, right? He's leading the team with 52 points. Jonathan Marchessault has 27 goals already, guys. <laughs> Dude, we have almost 30 games left, and this dude has almost passed 30 goals. That's impressive. Mark Stone's got 36 assists. Um, yeah, I mean, we're seeing some really good play. Uh, 44 points. So when you look at the points totals, right now, and this is not surprising, your top four guys are Mark Stone, Jack Eichel, Jonathan Marchessault, William Carlson. By the way, if I name that four off anywhere else in the league, dude, like everyone else is talking about them as championships too. On top of that, you got Petrangelo, you got Shea Theodore, you got uh, Chandler Stevenson, you got Ian Barbashev. Like, dude, this this team is this team is just really really deep. Um, on top of that, you have a goalie who's been unbelievable, guys. Like, I know he was injured most of the year, but what he's doing right now is is kind of unprecedented. Right now, he's when Aiden Hill starts, okay, as a goalie. Yes, he was injured for about. I don't know, I would say he's injured for like 11, 12 games, which is a good stretch of the season. Um, but when Aiden Hill is playing, he is 14, 3, and 2. I want to make sure I, I want to make sure I, I reiterate this. That man is 14, 3, and 2 is the starter this year. He is saving more than 93% of his of the shots that are coming his way. He only averages two goals a game. Time on ice is like 1,138 minutes. Like, they're putting in time. It is absolutely unbelievable that this guy is 14-3-2. Never heard of that. He's played 20 games, right? I know you guys, you're, I'm, you're not mathing good, right? That's that's 19 games. Yes, he did get injured in one of those games. They had to pull. It's all good. But he still started 20 games this year, and they are 14-3 and two. This guy just has to stay healthy, man. They need to keep him healthy for the run. If they if they really want to make a make uh, make a splash, they want to if they want to go deep into this NHL playoff, um, they want to be as dominant as they were last year. They just got to keep this guy healthy, man. They have to have him hot, and it it seems as though he is hot. When you're 14-3 and two, you are hot, like. That's huge going to the playoffs. Right now they've played, oh, 53 games, right? According to the standings, they played 53 games. Um, there's 82 in an NHL season, I believe. I could be wrong. I'm pretty positive. Yep, there's 82 in an NHL season. I mean, there's there's a ton of winnable games remaining scheduled. Which, which tells me that the Knights could easily go on that run I've been telling you guys about. Seattle's not as good as last year, right? Detroit's not that great. Yes, you got to run into Vancouver, but Columbus and Buffalo are back to being Columbus and Buffalo. Um, San Jose is so bad. So bad. Um, you have Anaheim at the end of the year. Although they're, they've gotten better this year, they're still not that team that, that's really going to compete with uh, the Golden Knights. And that could be one of those where if the Golden Knights go on a pretty decent run, they could probably look at sitting players. Uh, before the playoffs on April 18th. But that's honestly kind of not the hockey way. That's more basketball and football. Hockey's just like, let's let's skate, dude. Let's get it done. Let's hit. Let's have a good time. But, uh, yeah, Golden Knights are in, in an unbelievable position. They're second in the division. That's still home. Your, your first series is going to be a home playoff series. Right? And here's the other thing. The number one seed, the number one seed, with the exception of last year, um, the top team, points wise which looks like it could be the Canucks has lost like the last four years like the president's trophy curse seems to be real I don't believe in that type of stuff but man when you look at the the last five years the, the team that's won the president's trophy and for folks that are just listening in for the first time ever or don't quite understand what the president's trophy is it is the most wins in a regular season by an NHL team 
So if you get the President's Trophy, you're more than likely the number one seed in your conference. Um, it looks like the Canucks could be a team that's that's vying for the number one seed, which would be awesome. Uh, but the bad part is there is a belief that there is a curse for the number one seed, for the, for the uh, President's Trophy winner, because the last five President's Trophy winners have been knocked out of the first round of the playoffs. Which would be great for Vegas that if they stay second, they're probably going to be home ice the rest of the of the playoffs, which would be amazing, right? So anything could happen. They're in a great position. Um, they definitely shouldn't fret because uh, cause they're in a good spot. Um, and, and again, at any time, they could go on that run. When you, even in your bad year, right, your year where you had all those injuries and guys started coming back really late, but it was too late, the Golden Knights had 10 wins or more. At least one 10 win streak in the back half of the season. That's massive points. That's 20 points, guys. That's huge. If the Golden Knights turn around and do that again, they'll they'll take this they'll take this division. They'll take the conference again. No problem. And that's what we're waiting to see. What's happening in Vegas? Connor McDavid fight has been officially announced. Uh, June 29th, Vegas. It was officially announced a while ago, but hey. It is what it is. I just like how Connor McDavid's like. I mean, the dude's juiced up, and he's he's. I'm just saying, there's no way you get that big naturally, um, especially after you've had a fight career where you've been fighting around 155 and 160 and stuff like that. Just no way. Uh, the dude's been juicing. It's okay. It, I mean, his chin's different, all that stuff. Everything looks different, um, and he's earned it. Like he can do whatever he wants. The proper 12 whiskey has absolutely been selling like crazy. Um, I want to say that's made him like hundred plus million dollars. Like the guy is extremely rich. His personality is a ticket draw. That's why. That's why Dana White. I mean, like he could be past his prime. Dana White doesn't care. If Connor McDavid shows up, people are going to buy pay per views. People are going to buy tickets to go watch the match. That's what Connor McDavid does. He has pull, and I there's a possibility. You know, as big as he is, because they're they're fighting at 185. Which we've never seen Connor McDavid fight at. Never. He's not a very big guy. Right? Unbelievably skilled fighter. Okay? Unbelievable tenacity. The guy is is just an absolute monster. But him and Michael Chandler are going at it at 185. I don't think either one of them ever fought there before. So that's going to be super weird. A lot of that is probably because Connor McDavid is now a movie star. If you guys haven't noticed, he is now part of Roadhouse. Or the remake with Jake Gyllenhaal. And he looked pretty big for that. And he looks like he's just acting like himself, which is pretty crazy. How they were able to write that in. But he's big time right now, man. And that's probably a huge reason why they're they're doing that catch weight of 185. Because I just don't think Connor can cut. And, and if I'm Connor and I'm coming back, let's be honest. You made a career of cutting like 25 to 30 pounds. And fighting in those lower weight classes. Again, the the 150s and the 160s and the low, like 171. I, I can't remember. one. I think he, he fought 171 one time. Otherwise, it's always been the, the lower levels for him. The two lower levels for him. He's probably saying 185 because, one, he doesn't want to cut anymore. I don't blame him. When you have a career like he's had, you can kind of make, you can call your shots. And, two... He probably has a lot of weight he's got to get off. Because you can tell, man, he's put some time in the gym. And I'm not I'm not saying anything bad, man. Not saying anything bad. I, it's just obvious. There's there's no way he's not enhanced. Just saying. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I like how they're doing it. It's like when they announced it, it was like six months out. So that's plenty of time for him to get off the cycle and test clean. Um, which is great. I wish John Jones would have would have taking that practice uh we all know what i'm talking about with with cormier and stuff like that that's going to be a really interesting fight dude mcgregor michael chandler is going to be unbelievably interesting we're still waiting to hear more news on john jones and, and stipe Mojicic. um it sounded like it was hot john jones was calling for stipe and then i don't know it just seems like they can't seem to hammer out a date um when we when they do man i'm gonna let you guys know because that would be an un, that'll be an unreal fight, and I I would imagine, um, I would imagine that happens in Vegas because John well first of all John Jones lives in Vegas, 
Oh, it was canceled. Awesome. Oh, okay, yeah, so John Jones had pec surgery. And he apologized to Stipe. That's awesome. It's not really John Jones's character. Yep, so he tore his pec. He had pec surgery. He's got to come back from that in order to fight Sipe, so it was canceled. It was supposed to happen last November, but it didn't happen because John Jones had that injury. So I think they're going to they're probably going to try and get that back, get it going again. Um let's See here. And they're trying to do it for the title because Dana White said that it would be an in, insult to Mojic to compete for lesser distinction given his illustration uh, illustrious career. Yeah, he's been an unbelievable heavyweight. An unbelievable heavyweight. He was he was different, man. He was a bad man. Bad man. But yeah, Stipe and Johns is on hold. We're looking at Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler in Vegas June 29th. That'll be a big fight. Huge fight. Big draw. Like it's you're going to you're going to be hard pressed to find something different. Speaking of big draw, the Super Bowl was a big draw. Vegas was a big draw. Man, they made a ton of money, dude. Um, the NFL is greedy as hell, by the way. Like so, the, some of the stuff they were doing to the players, like the players make the NFL millions and millions and millions of dollars. And you're telling me that you got, you're going to charge $2.3 million for, for a suite, even for players? It's crazy, man. It's absolutely nuts. The NFL is a license to print money. They're just in a different stratosphere right now. The Super Bowl is in Vegas. Uh, numbers were reported to be really well. Uh, they were sold out. I think the cheapest ticket was like five grand, uh, which is nuts. The cheapest ticket was five grand, and that was off the market. Otherwise, like ten grand was the average at the game. A suite was like two million, two point three million. Like, dude, making money hand over fist. And then there were some weird statistics, and I hate to say this because I'm not a Swifty or anything like that. I'm really sick of that whole deal. Um, but they said that. Taylor Swift, the Swifties, Chiefs, they generated an, the NFL an extra $331 million this year, roughly. And it could be higher. Um, but that the league share, the revenue share, that will be announced, I'm sure, because they do it almost every single year at the new league around the new league year, um, that's going to be big. It's going to be big for teams. I think it's probably going to be an extra $50 million per team, which would be incredible. Um, and, and that's just kind of where the NFL's at, man. They're just making money left. <laughs> yeah, I know. Larry says so much money. Dude, crazy money. Crazy money. If you're telling me one chick that shows up to a game, I mean, she's the most popular. Let's be honest. She's like the most popular star in the world. Uh, Taylor Swift is nuts. She's got a following like no other. Now she's dating and, and it seems like Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift are unbelievably serious. And um, by the way, the Jason Kelsey videos have been absolutely hilarious the luchador outfit the chief's luchador outfit has been has been so comical what a jason kelsey thing to do like no wonder travis loves him so much by the way jason's just a great personality he's a great brother like dude he's got he's got he's just got <laughs> he's got great energy man they're just i love his his show new heights they do a great job uh but jason for me takes the cake he's one of my favorite personalities and he's going to be a first ballot hall of fame center which i don't I don't know if I can think of another center that was like that. Even Otto for the Raiders. I don't know if he was a first first ballot. I just don't see it. So that was hilarious. But yeah, Taylor Swift, such a big impact. You know, she showed up, what was it, midway through the season? Started going to home games. Based on, you know, ticket sales and jersey sales, they, they tie a lot of it to Taylor Swift. And it sounds like she made the NFL an extra 300 and $31 million for her appearances there. It'll be interesting to see if she tries to do a deal with the NFL. If she's some sort of affiliate or something like that. And she's not the only famous chick, by the way. That, uh, what is it, Hooschek? That Kyle Hooschek? His wife is, he, she got a license gifted to her. The NFL didn't charge her for it. She's making women's apparel. Using leftover jerseys and stuff. She's gotten really popular all of a sudden. Dude, man. Super cool. Super cool. But Vegas was crazy. And if you guys had an opportunity to to look at my Twitter, right? 
Sin City, under, Sin City underscore IESR, I went in on Mark Davis. I have no problem saying it. Like, Mark Davis is the biggest problem with the Raiders right now. Huge problem. He's been the owner for 11 seasons. 11. The guy has been the owner for 11 seasons, and what has he done? In 11 seasons, Mark Davis has hired five head coaches. I'm not talking about the interims, guys. I'm not counting the interims. That'd be an additional three of them, by the way. He's hired five head coaches and four GMs in his 11 years. You can't tell me that's not ridiculous. His expert, and I say this with quotations, ownership skills have had the later have had the Raiders less than mediocre for a decade. We've seen two playoff appearances. And the icing on the cake is the Chiefs, which is the Raiders' arch nemesis, right? I know that the Niners were back in the day because of the, you know, crossing the bridge and stuff like that. You said, I thought, you're probably right. I, I just know that she got really, Taryn, you're 100% correct. Uh, who's, I can't, I have a hard time saying his name. Who's Chick's wife did all NFL apparel, not just women's, but she specialized in doing the women's apparel. Yeah, she did those really cool coats for Taylor Lautner and stuff like that. Like, I totally get what you're saying. Um, I'm just saying, like, the women's apparel she did just blew up, man, on social media. It was huge. Which is super cool, man. Good for her. What a great career she can have if she continues to do that. That's that had to be a lot of hustle, and the NFL noticed her, so that's awesome. But anyway, the icing on the cake is the Chiefs won in, in Raiders Stadium, won a Super Bowl in Raiders Stadium. In the 11 years Mark Davis has been the owner, we've been basically a laughing stock. Let me put this in perspective, because I put this on my personal Twitter. I'm not a big fan of, of people who come in with, with, with the heat because they think that they're smart, and they're not. I mean, you're not you're not gonna get me, man. There's no effing way. I do too much studying on this stuff. But but it's like this. Um, of course, now all of a sudden those tweets aren't showing up. That's crazy. It's almost like somebody like deleted them or something. Anyway, I had a I had a, somebody chime in and say, you know, who was the owner before Mark Davis? And I said, dude, that has nothing to do with what I'm saying at all. Not even relevant. Right? Not even close. Five head coaches, four GMs. If you if you add them up, if you add these into it, then that's three additional interim coaches that that were head coaches of the team. Horrible drafting. It's just been a mess. Mark Davis is a mess, and it's been so embarrassing that. Here, let me put it in the perspective here, and I because I had a guy come up on my Twitter, and I don't know why I can't see it now. But I had a guy come up on my Twitter, and he was like. He, he was saying stuff like, well, he was bringing up Al Davis. Like, Al Davis had anything to do with what Mark's done the last 11 years. He obviously hasn't, for, for obvious reasons, all right? Rest in peace to Al Davis, to Al, Big Al. Um, but, the, but the reality is, dude, you've had 11 years to write the ship. How about this? If 11 years isn't enough time, then what is? The Detroit Lions three years ago hired Dan Campbell and their their GM, who have done a fantastic job of building the team and rebuilding the culture there. In three years, they were in the NFC Championship. They traded away the, the, the best franchise quarterback that the Lions have ever had in Matthew Stafford to the Los Angeles Rams, knowing that he would probably go there and win, and taking that cake eating that cake and taking it on the face, right? They traded him away to get draft capital. They were picking Aiden Hutchinson number one again. Like, they were the number one overall pick. 
few years ago. And now they're playing in the NFC Championship. I have absolutely no clue what... It's just bad ownership, man. That's what it comes down to. That's why I'm envious of the Chiefs. Like, look what that owner's done. Look what that... Look what Brett Veach has done. Andy Reid has done. They've built sustainable culture. And it's because they don't have an idiot with a bowl cut running their team. I'm actually... And I'll say this. I'm really positive about Tom Brady becoming, you know, a minority head, a minority owner. Um, it says sounds like he's really uh, he's actually on his way to doing that. That's huge because he's going to provide some feedback in the football side of things that that Mark just doesn't have. And it's quite obvious he he is he does not understand how to build culture or build teams. It's that simple. He can spend the money, he can get the best facilities in the world, but what does that mean? If the people you are hiring are not getting the job done. He's had 11 years. The Lions completely turned out around turned around their team in three years. There's no excuse, man. I do feel like AP is a lot like Dan Campbell, though. What I am worried about is the nepotism. I do not like that he hired his son as an offensive quality control coach for the Raiders. It's the typical who you know, not what you know type situation and I'm not saying his son isn't a bright football mind but you're in a can't miss situation I truly believe and I don't know this for sure but I think Antonio Pierce is on a two-year deal it's kind of a prove it deal part of the reason why they couldn't get Cliff Kingsbury for a three-year deal they didn't want to they didn't want to tie Cliff Kingsbury to a three-year deal because I don't believe the head coach has a three-year deal I could be wrong but something tells me he has a two-year deal it's like approve it type thing the nice thing is he's got two very successful coaches in Tom Coughlin and my uh, Marvin Lewis backing him helping him grow that's going to be huge it's going to be huge and I hope he takes it serious and I hope he grows because there's a possibility AP could be the next John Madden John Madden was a, a O-line coach hired out of the blue by Al Davis and what did he do he rebuilt culture. He instilled a physical, tough, Raider way. Same things that, that AP's been talking about. What's AP got to do? Him and Tom Telesco got to swing for the fences. We talked about this early in the, in, in the show. You're not going to win without a franchise quarterback. It's that simple. Look at the last few Super Bowl champs. Okay, The last two being Patrick Mahomes... The one before that was who? Matthew Stafford. If you're telling me he's not a franchise quarterback, you're absolutely high. Um, see here, the one before that, I think it was the Chiefs. No, it was it was Tom Brady with the Bucks. He's a franchise quarterback. What about the year before that? Oh, Patrick Mahomes. You guys see where I'm going with this? If you have a top franchise quarterback on your team, you're going to win games. The Raiders have to find their guy. Which brings me to my mock drafts. And it's not as realistic as I want it to be. Because for some reason, PFF, their, their draft simulator, the, the trades just, they, they don't honor the value chart, right? It's just kind of based on interest. Regardless, I think AP and Tom Telesco have to trade up for Jaden Daniels. I think they need to get to three if they can. Because Jaden Daniels is going to be gone. Drake May is going to be gone. Caleb Williams is going to be gone. We'll never get the value the Chiefs did, right? Because right now I think a team would, would spend five first-round picks for Patrick Mahomes. Chiefs would never give him away. You guys get what I'm saying, though. The Chiefs only had to give up a first-round pick and a third-round pick to trade up to draft Patrick Mahomes when he was raw. And then they developed him for a year. Like, you want to talk about value, dude? Unbelievable. Right? The Raiders got to figure it out. They got to find a way to trade up. Here's the way to do it. I don't think you get any draft capital this year from the New York Jets. But it is very obvious that the New York Jets, the New York Jets would have interest in Devontae Adams. If you're looking to go with a rookie, and Devontae, for the most part, was kind of shut down last year. He wasn't. He had over 1,000 yards receiving. But you guys get what I'm saying. He's still an excellent player, but he wants to compete for a championship, and the Raiders just aren't ready to do that right now. If I were the Raiders, I'd try and trade him for a first and a second next year. 
for 2025. You want to talk about ways to build your, your team? Do that. Then trade up for Jaden Daniels. You're going to have a ton of cap space, right? With with Devontae Adams gone, you have an extra $30 million in cap space. It is said the Raiders will be close to 70 when all of the roster moves are made, right? So like Jimmy Garoppolo being designated a post-June 1 cut, that's going to free up $30 million. Like the Raiders are going to have a ton of ton of cap. They got to spend. A T. Higgins would be a great spend. A T. Higgins would be an unbelievable spend. I don't know if it's the right call at this time, but he'd be an unbelievable spend. I don't know if I'd spend the big money on Chris Jones, even though he's still extremely dominant. I don't know if I'd spend the big money on him in this late in his career. Um, and I don't think he's going to get the, I don't think he's going to get the contract he's hoping for. And if he wants to three peat with the chiefs, he really has to work something out. That's that's Jones friendly and team friendly. Uh, Jen B says you can have the Browns 2025 first. We don't know what to do with them. Hey, you, you, <laughs> Girl, you're talking to the you're talking to choir, man. Preaching the choir. Raiders have been horrible first round picks. We passed on Jalen Carter for uh, this Wilson kid, and yes, he did get really he did come on at the end of the year, but they they moved him to defensive tackle in a four in a four man front, so he started seeing some pass rush. Um, the emergence of Ma- uh, Malcolm Koontz is awesome. Um, we needed to see that. It's just. I, I truly believe the Raiders are going to have to make a move. So what I did in the trade, and this is this is what I'll say before before we get off the show. The mock draft that I did was I traded Devontae Adams for a future first and second round pick. So a 2025 first and second round pick with the Jets. I know what you guys are thinking. That doesn't help us this year. It doesn't. You're right. I was able to trade up for Jaden Daniels. I had to give up a, a second. I had to give up a fourth, and I gave up a first next next year. Now, this isn't realistic because I think if the Raiders wanted to get that done, they would probably have to give up another first-round pick, which is fine because if you do that, you still have your first-round pick next year to help build your team because, Devontae Adams, because of the bon- Devontae Adams trade, right? You get your quarterback. You, you'll probably have the ability – to get a few offensive and defensive linemen, which is all the Raiders really need to focus on at this point, you can sign a decent receiver in free agency, which would be my call, right? If you can get T. Higgins, go get him. Yes, it's going to be a big contract, but you're basically replacing his contract with Devontae. You're replacing Devontae Adams' contract with T. Higgins, a younger, more, ath- a younger receiver with more tread on the miles right now. T. Higgins is a stud. That's what I would look into. There's probably going to be other guys available. It's just the way the free agency rolls. But they got to make a big splash. I think Patrick Queen should be a priority for the Raiders. They have to build that front seven if they want to be an elite team moving forward. If they want to be a contender in a couple of years, Patrick Queen would be an absolute stud. He'd be the Fred Ward of the Raiders. Um, so you have good safeties. I think they have really good corners. I think they can build through the draft. They just have to give them, give themselves an opportunity. And and I think the most important thing they need to do this year is you have to build a team. You have to decide what you're doing with Devonte Adams, right? Um, Josh Jacobs, I think you're, I think you need to let him go. It's, it's going to suck, but the following year in 2025, you're going to get a compensatory pick, probably a third round pick because he was a rushing champion. At one point, he's he's a major free agent. Oh yeah, Jen, 100%. T. Higgins is absolutely going to be a hot hot commodity. Um, I think T. Higgins is going to have to decide what he wants to do. Like it's going to be T. Higgins and, and his team that that have the final say. I do think Vegas is an unbelievably like touted place. There's no state income tax, right? Um, which means you keep more of your money. It's a growing mecca. There's there's sponsorships available everywhere. You've seen what happened with Devontae Adams and Derek Carr and all them guys. They made tons of money here in Vegas. I, I T. Higgins could go somewhere else because he's going to want to go somewhere where they have a franchise quarterback. If I were him, that's what I'd want to do. But if you're the Raiders and you're telling him, hey, we're going to do everything we can to trade up, T. Higgins might sign the dotted line. So you're getting a rookie quarterback on a rookie contract, right? 
you have T. Higgins on a big contract, which kind of matches up because by the time T. Higgins leaves his prime, the quarterback should be getting paid and you'll be able to start looking into drafting wide receivers at that point. Right? I think the time is now. It is. And the Raiders can't waste time, even if they don't get Jaden Daniels. Here's my opinion, man. Let Caleb Williams go. The kid seems like a diva. I'm going to say it like it is, man. I don't. The kid seems like a diva. His dad seems like a problem. His representatives are talking about, like, partial ownership and stuff. It, it, all that crazy stuff happened. Maybe they're not on that same bandwagon now, but they were talking about all that crazy stuff for a while. I would avoid Caleb Williams. Um, I'm not saying he's Johnny Manziel. I'm saying he's a much better version of Johnny Manziel. The problem is he just never plays within the system, and maybe it's because he was running for his life at USC. I just don't see him as a fit to be a Raider. Okay, Jaden Daniels seems like a fit. Another guy is Drake May. I've been huge on Drake May. The guy to me looks like Big Ben, but more athletic. He's got a huge arm. He's got a cannon. We haven't even seen his full potential. Um, but him and J him or Jaden Daniels would be unbelievable. I'm not big on the Bo Nix hype. If the Raiders can't trade up, they have to trade back. That's been all of my scenarios, right? If the Raiders can't trade up, I think they should trade back. They need to get more draft capital. If they trade back, they'll still have the opportunity to get Bo Nix or a Michael Penix. And those wouldn't be bad options either with the type of team you're building. But it, this is the year, man. If, if there's a franchise guy out there and you really want him, you got to go get him. Even if that means you're trading away a couple first-round picks. And I'm not talking about this one. Like, people trade back to 13. I'm thinking 25 and 26 are gone, dude, if you want to trade up. Terrence said, do not get Bo Nix. I don't, I don't disagree with you, man. Michael Penix is probably my preferred option if we can't get those guys. Um, but something tells me, man, like it sounds like Telesco likes Nix. Um, he is a gamer. He had one of the best uh, grades against pressure. Like He just reads blitz as well. He's got a pretty big arm. He's just not my choice. Like, I would rather have J.J. McCarthy over Nix. But what do I know? This is the Sin City Sports Show presented by Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. You guys can catch us every Tuesday evening, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we talk all things Vegas sports. You guys can catch us on our socials at Sin City underscore IESR, at Kill underscore Henderson, where we talk all things Vegas sports. You can catch our, our podcast, man. If you guys missed the show, no big deal. Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Pods, Apple Pods, we're everywhere, man. Go to our website, like our channel, look at our bio, spread the love across the team because we do a lot of hard work. And as always, folks, love, peace, and air, peace, folks.